Hey everyone, we're just going to give a couple more minutes as I know some attendees are still coming in uh, to the event. So we'll give about mm, two or three more minutes here. All right, I'd say we could probably go ahead and get started. There will probably be a few people filing in here in the last couple of minutes. I wanna welcome all of you to our very first Castle Conversation. Um, this is the first of the fall semester um, of hopefully many. We plan to do these bi-weekly um, for this semester and then hopefully in the winter semester as well. My name is Morgan Yunker. I am the Retention and Outreach Manager for the College of Art Sciences and Letters um, and I will be your host for this little conversation we're about to have. You're probably wondering what the purpose of these conversations are. And really it's just a way for us to share some information, do something different from always having email. Um, this is a way to share different things that might be happening within Castle, whether it's events, um, new programs, information about academics, introduce you to faculty and staff that you might um, not get a chance to meet because we're not on campus this year. Um, but more importantly, it's really a way for us just to come together and kind of be part of something for a little while on a Thursday afternoon. So thank you all for being here. Um, we're really looking forward to this. I do want to share with you what our agenda looks like. Um, so you'll notice we'll first hear from our Dean, Martin Hershock. We will, I will share a few upcoming events uh, that are going on that are Castle related. And then we're gonna hear from some of our learning center directors in our internship office about some great opportunities they have. And finally, we're gonna finish up with some questions and answers. Um, so we do have a few questions that were asked prior to this starting, um, but please feel free to ask any questions you might have as we go throughout the presentation. Um, and this is just a reminder that this is being recorded and you can find this on our website um, or share with your friends that it will be on our website if they wanna take a peek at it later. So without further ado, I will introduce our Dean, Martin Hershock. Thank you, Morgan. Hey, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well and that everyone's safe and that your academic year is off to a smooth start or at least as smooth a start as it can be given current circumstances. So before I share a few thoughts um, about the current state of the college. Um, I wanted to take a couple of moments to express my sincere and deeply felt pride in all of you for the hard work and effort that you have expended over the past six months to keep your dream of a college degree moving forward and to support one another as we 
learned to navigate this new remote uh, learning environment. As we are all very much aware, this has been anything but an easy task. Um, I know that you've been asked to do um, a lot in a short period of time, that the demands upon you and your time have been persistent and ever-changing, uh, that this transition has been difficult, and that there's more hard work ahead as we all wait to see how this pandemic will play out. I understand too that uh, the isolation that many of us are feeling, the long hours that we're putting in, the, and the challenges that many of you are facing uh, weighs heavy, and that there are those among us who are struggling to hold themselves together, let alone moving themselves forward. Add to this the mix of our current social and political duress, and we have a perfect storm of forces aligned to make our lives incredibly difficult and challenging. In spite of all of this, however, I'm heartened by the stick to itivity, the persistence, and the grit that you've all demonstrated. So I just wanted to commend you all for a job well done and to convey to you how proud I am of you um, as your dean, as a faculty member, and uh, as an alum. I too am a Castle graduate, although it's been a few years. So let me turn to a brief overview of the current state of affairs in the college and share with you some ideas I have about um, an opportunity that I think uh, exists for the college moving forward. So a little over a month ago, I submitted uh, an annual report on the college to our provost, Susan Alcock. And I always find a lot of inspiration when I assemble that document. But this year, given our particular circumstances and the challenges that we've faced, I was especially proud of all that I had to report on. Among, among the many accomplishments um, that we can point to during the 2019-2020 academic year uh, are the following. Um, the creation of the Foundations Program, um, which is brand new. It just launched uh, this semester. So some of you may be enrolled in Foundations courses. Um, those courses are very well enrolled. And the idea behind them is to introduce students, not just to the College of Arts, Sciences, and Letters, but to the university as a whole. Um, we established a coordinated CASEL co-op and internship office to better serve students and our varied internship and co-op programs. We endowed our Get to Graduation Scholarship Fund. Um, this one is designed to help students who've run out of financial aid but who are still a few credits short of graduating um, to get past the finish mark. We've provided just under $50,000 and financial aid to help 62 students to complete their degrees. So we're really proud of that. Uh, we've developed a lot of new digital content to highlight uh, the college and a lot of our individual programs and majors. We increased our first to second year retention rate by roughly 5% and our four year graduation rate by nearly 10% all in the course of one year. Um, we revised our strategic plan and created a new implementation plan for the upcoming academic year, and you can find that on our website. Um, as a whole, the faculty published 18 books, 41 book chapters, and 110 articles, and wrote 74 successful grants. And a number of those articles had students like yourselves as um, co-authors, so that's pretty amazing. We launched um, a brand new degree program in actuarial mathematics. And we partnered with the College of Engineering and Computer Science uh, to create a brand new joint degree program um, on, on human-centered design. So that's really exciting, sort of blending engineering and, uh, and the arts. Uh, we remain committed to supporting student research. Um, just to give you a sense of how uh, well this has gone over the last 10 years, our NATSI department alone um, is averaging just under 18 students per year who are showing up as joint authors 
uh, on publications working with faculty. That's pretty impressive. And then we successfully hired a number of wonderful new faculty um, in a number of areas um, to build uh, on existing strength and to create some new opportunities for students. And this is just to name a handful of the many achievements. So there are a lot of things to be very proud of um, here in the College of Arts, Sciences and Letters. At the same time, the, the current environment in higher education and the circumstances specific to our campus have also convinced me that it is probably a good time for the college to take a moment um, and to consider both its current state and its future direction. For those of you who have been affiliated with the college for any length of time, you will undoubtedly recognize that one of the primary difficulties that we face is um, our sense of identity. Unlike our professional oriented peers, right, in business or engineering or education, um, in the main, uh, ours is not a college that steers students toward a specific career path or a set of connected career paths. Rather, as the college that provides the foundational knowledge and critical soft skills that enable students to succeed and that renders our students into thoughtful, informed members of society, Castle's Reach has traditionally been very broad. And indeed, throughout its relatively short lifespan, Castle has worked hard to replicate what our larger peer universities and colleges across the country did, trying diligently to offer a full range of academic programs that one could find at larger, more research-rich universities. In fact, when I became dean, my personal goal for Castle was to leverage its relatively small size and the great work that our faculty and students did um, to try to uh, create um, an identity for the college as a publicly funded version of a small private liberal arts college, complete with high value student success programs that one associates with those kinds of schools. And indeed, I'm very proud of the many steps that we've taken to move that vision forward. We've created a number of new academic programs. We dramatically increased funding for student research. We built new facilities. Uh, we started a plethora of new study abroad programs. We've enhanced support for faculty research. Uh, we created a new strategic plan. Um, as I said, we've enhanced the capacity that we have to tell our own stories, and I could go on and on. Unfortunately, however, largely due to a lack of resources and the exponential enrollment growth in engineering and business and our own enrollment decline here in the college, um, we've never really been able to fully realize that vision. And so as a result, um, we look much the same as our other peer institutions who are trying um, to be everything to everybody. Um, and I think recent circumstances make it really clear that this mode of operating is not a sustainable one. We cannot, in my view, continue along the same path and expect a different result, nor is the vision we are pursuing one that can nurture the college going forward. Trying to play the uh, us too game is a recipe for disaster, and given our size and finances is not a plan for success. Universities across the country, most recently Adrian College here in Michigan, are cutting programs in the humanities and the arts, and we want to prevent that if possible. So now, does this mean that Castle students should no longer be exposed to the arts or to history, my own discipline, to foreign languages or to anthropology? Of course you should be. Um, I am wondering though whether we necessarily need to do this in the manner that we've always done it. Indeed, I can think of a number of programs in the college where students gain exposure to multiple disciplines without being bound to the traditional curricular design 
that is characteristic of many disciplines here in Castle. So what is increasingly clear to me is that Castle needs a new identity. The good news here is that in my view, there is a vision out there that's already very much in evidence here in the college, one that has already shifted a lot of what we do. This became abundantly clear to me as I prepared this year's annual report and as I spent time listening to faculty, to students and to staff share their ideas uh, with the provost and with my team about the big ideas that they had or the things that they are doing. Time and again, I heard people talking about engagement and about applied problem-based teaching and scholarship as a strength of the College of Arts, Sciences, and Letters. From those discussions, what I see as a potential new path forward for the college, uh, rather than um, traditional liberal arts college, like the model I had in mind before, uh, offering the same traditional disciplines offered by every other institution of higher learning, uh, I think maybe we could reimagine ourselves as a sort of arts, sciences, and letters laboratory school whose work, both in terms of teaching and scholarship, focuses on solving the problems of our region, problems like race and disparity, um, the environment community development, sustainability, smart public policy, urban design, uh, so on and so forth. These are also problems, of course, that are faced by much of the rest of the country. This kind of an experiential model would allow us to organize around particular themes and problems and to bring together expertise from a vast array of disciplines and programs. It would expose students to a plethora of disciplinary perspectives and it would play to our strengths. And I think it would set us apart from our other uh, peers here in the state of Michigan. Now it wouldn't mean an end to teaching history, English or art, but it would mean that, the, that what we do teach and the way that we do teach these things might change and that we do it in a more applied manner. Now I offer this idea as a vehicle for inviting you all to participate in a conversation about the future course of the college and about the heart and soul of who we are here in the College of Arts, Sciences and Letters. Right? Does it, is this a model that appeals to you? Um, how do we get there if we decide that this is what we want to do? What would the college need to look like to support this kind of model? What other ideas might you have about an identity uh, or a path forward for Castle? It's clear to me though that we need to try something new and I am really eager to have a conversation around what that might look like. Um, so I told Morgan I would keep it brief relative to updating you on the college. Those are some of the things that we've been thinking about. Um, and again, these are the kinds of things we would love to hear um, from you about. Let me also spend just a couple of minutes talking about some things that are going on at the university level um, and um, a couple of other items before I turn it back over to Morgan. So you're all aware um, now, I think, that our winter schedule is going to look very much like uh, our fall schedule, um, except it will be flipped. That is, we will start the semester um, exclusively in a remote learning environment and then hopefully everything um, knock on wood panning out uh, will shift to a limited on-campus um, classroom presence for um, March and April um, and again the footprint that we will have on campus the density will be relatively limited uh, and the courses that will be offered will primarily be things that cannot be done remotely, like laboratories or um, uh, design courses, um, senior projects, things of that sort. 
Um, so that's how things are looking for winter. The winter break, the traditional spring break will disappear, but we will also be starting the semester um, a week later. So that you'll have more time uh, between the two semesters to uh, sort of relax and uh, regather your your energy for the for the winter term. Um, if you are paying attention to the university's COVID website, you can see that we have had a very small number of reported cases. Um, the cases have been very um, isolated um, and the university moved quickly to uh, work with those students to quarantine themselves um, and also to inform others who may have been um, in contact with those students that they may have been exposed. Um, thus far, no one else who has uh, come into contact with the students has tested positive. Um, so you can, again, follow um, Campus Progress um, by logging onto the COVID website. Um, study abroad. Uh, this is something that I referenced that the college had created a number of new programs. Um, we were very eager to launch, uh, relaunch these programs coming this um, this uh, summer. Um, I'm not sure that that's going to happen given the current state of affairs and frankly, given the fact that most countries around the world um, are very much limiting travel from the United States. More on that coming forward, but um, right now study abroad opportunities are looking like they may not happen this year. Um, you'll be getting information about commencement for December um, relatively soon. I would venture to guess it will very much look like it did uh, back in, in April um, and that it will be largely uh, a remote um, commencement for the winter semester. Um, uh, Pay attention to the Victor's link, right? You can also find this on the university webpage. I know Morgan's gonna be talking about some castle specific events coming up, but the Victor's link contains information about events that are happening um, across the entire campus. Um, so that's a really important uh, resource to bookmark so that you can find out what's going on on campus. Um, there will be, there's two upcoming discussions with the chancellor around uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, those are scheduled for October 6th and October 16th. I would strongly encourage um, any of, of you who may be available to participate in those conversations. It's really important that uh, the chancellor hear from students about your experiences and your views um, on the diversity, equity, and inclusion front so that the campus can um, create policies and programs that will serve um, all, of, uh, all of you um, in, a, in, a, in a positive way. Um, I should also mention that the university is uh, very eager to have all of you complete the online sexual assault prevention training. Uh, that link has been widely shared. Um, if you complete the training by November 16th, you can actually, um, you're eligible to win a $100 um, gift card. So it's really important that, um, that you as students participate in that, those training programs. The fact that there's an extra incentive involved um, makes it all the better. So please um, be mindful of that and, and, and make sure that you've um, participated in that training. Um, finally, uh, I wanted to briefly um, alert you to some university-wide resources that are available to you um, to provide assistance in case you need as I said, um, the isolation of, of an online learning environment and the dislocations that many of us are experiencing and the stress that we're under, um, it's leading to a lot of, of um, problems for many folks. And we do have the Counseling and Psychological Services Office here on campus 
Um, we've added additional staff to that office. They've added additional access and hours. Um, by all means, if you are having some difficulty, um, don't hesitate to reach out to that office and to get some assistance or to even just to, if it's just to have a sympathetic ear to hear out um, what, you're, what you're dealing with and, and grappling with. The library's done a fabulous job of creating uh, resources for students to assist you in uh, both your research, but also um, in navigating Canvas. Um, they've created a, a series of little quick um, videos um, that are animated that help you to uh, familiarize yourself with Canvas and how to na navigate the Canvas environment. So I would encourage you to check out the library web website and see what they have available to you. Um, if you're having technological challenges, maybe you don't have a laptop or uh, the device you have at home really isn't compatible with um, the needs that you're facing, you should by all means, you can reach out directly to, uh, to me or to the student affairs office. Um, they can put you in touch with um, our IT office or with other resources that are available on campus to assist you to make sure that you have what you need to be successful. Likewise, if you're facing financial challenges, um, you know, maybe you you um, lost a job as a result of COVID or um, you are taking more credit hours because of the block tuition and maybe having a hard time uh, meeting your tuition payments, reach out to financial aid. There have been a number of brand new programs that have been started um, with some of the money that has come to us from, from Ann Arbor, um, all designed to try to help students through cur our current circumstances and to make it easier for them to complete their degrees. So um, again, don't hesitate to reach out if you need some help or if you um, would like to talk about what assistance is available to you. And then finally, um, don't forget about the resources that are available through the START office, um, advising, and, and here within the College of Arts, Sciences, and Letters, the Castle Advising and Records office. We've got a great team down there. They, they do fabulous work. They're eager to meet with you and to help you um, navigate whatever sorts of academic uh, problems um, you might have have or to help you further your academic plans. Um, and then uh, you're going to hear a bit more today about uh, learning centers um, and the resources that are available here in the college to assist you should you find yourself maybe um, struggling a little with uh, maybe a math class or some math problems or with your science uh, coursework or uh, maybe you need some help writing um, uh, a paper for a class or you're in a foreign language and you could use some additional assistance there. We've got fabulous resources um, in the form of our, our learning centers and you're gonna hear more about those. So with that, uh, let me thank you for spending some time uh, with me this afternoon. And again, um, I wish for you all a very successful and safe 2020-2021 academic year and then I'm going to throw it back to Morgan, who will um, move this program in some new directions. Morgan. Thanks so much, Dean Hershock. Lots of information from him, and I'm going to throw just a bit more at you. Um, these are just some upcoming events, um, either some things that I've been told about or things that I found on the website that are related to Castle. Um, please take a look at these different events. If you're able to attend any of them, they sound interesting to you. Um, definitely partake. Um, you know, I know being online and being virtual, it's so much harder to engage with um, your peers or with faculty or with staff, but these are really great opportunities to be able to do that. So definitely take advantage. Um, you can see already tomorrow evening, there are a couple different events. Um, if you want to go to the French virtual conversation hour, um, maybe you have no idea um, how to speak French at all. And that's very similar to me, um, but it might be something or a place that you can go where you might learn a few things or maybe get interested in the language and find, hey, I want to major or minor in French. Um, you know, same thing tomorrow night. There is um, 
a uh, event. Uh, they'll be talking about race and extinction and kind of where our society, our world is going um, in terms of losing many different species. So if that's something that you might be interested in, definitely check that out. Um, that's brought to you by the Eco Club. Um, career Services Fair, please, I don't care if you are a freshman or if you are a senior, start thinking about your future um, and what you wanna do. There's so many opportunities and so many people to meet at career fairs. Um, it could be your next employer. It could be somebody that you could get an internship with. There are so many conversations that can really impact you um, just from visiting. So definitely check that one out on October 8th. Um, if you're interested in math, um, the math club does student math talks um, on October 8th from 5 until 8 p.m. Um, it's a great place to you know, talk with other math students, maybe get questions answered, find out a little bit more, and just expand your horizons a little bit when it does come to math. Um, and then obviously the election is coming up in the next month. Uh, so there are a couple different um, conversations and videos um, and panels, I believe, regarding the campaign. So if you wanted to check either of those out on October 12th, you have a couple opportunities um, to talk with current politicians, um, folks that cover the campaign, um, journalists and people in the like. So definitely check that out if you are just trying for your personal um, reasons to gain a little bit more insight about the campaign, or maybe you're just interested in politics uh, as a whole, but both really great opportunities for you. So with those updates, I am actually going to introduce you to some of our guest speakers today. Um, as Dean Hershock mentioned, we're gonna hear from some of our Learning Center directors and our Director of Advising, uh, who will actually be with us right now. So if I can introduce you to Susie Gassel. Hi everybody, my name is Susie Gassel. Um, I am, like Morgan said, the director of um, the Castle Advising Office. And I'm here to represent advising kind of generally for all Castle students. Um, for any of our um, new students, um, I do want to let you know a little bit about um, START. Remember, START is going to be the advising office for our new students, and they do mandatory advising. Um, and that's something that you need to do before registration. Um, you'll get an email when you need to make that appointment, so make sure you're checking your Numish email um, fairly regularly. They're also just available right now if you have any um, questions or concerns or just need to talk to someone about kind of navigating the university, feel free to reach out to your advisor. And remember, um, you have an assigned academic advisor, and you can always figure out who that is by checking out your degree works audit. It's at the very top. Um, and you can always feel free to reach out to your assigned advisor or contact the office generally, either by phone or email. Start advising and my office, Castle Advising. We both have phones and email that are working right now. Feel free to use either one. Um, also, new students, um, just want to give a shout out to Mrs. Prokopo, anybody who is pre-health of any kind, she is doing her new student sessions right now. Um, if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one appointment with Mrs. Prokopo, you've got to go to her new session first, so make sure that you attend one of those. She is doing them all month long. Um, if you didn't get her um, little flyer about that in your email, reach out to your start advisor and they can get that to you for sure. Um, in my office, we work with our returning students um, and we really try to be that um, partner on your educational journey. Um, we are here to help our students explore options, understand degree requirements, um, policy and procedure, um, and just generally navigate the university because even as a senior, you might need that help. Um, we are doing meetings right now um, via Google Meet, and um, we are actually just starting our junior year advising campaign, trying to get all of our juniors to come in and talk through their degree requirements, um, maybe talk about adding on a minor or a second major. Um, that appointment campaign just went out, so check your email if you are junior standing and you probably just got an email from me inviting you to make an appointment with one of our advisors. We'd love to see you. Um, so yeah, anything, any questions you have, feel free to reach out to advising, whether it's my office or if you meet with START, we are here to help you out. 
Great, thank you so much, Susie. Um, definitely take advantage of the advising office. I can't tell you enough how much um, they can help you with so many different things, but certainly everybody's mind is trying to graduate in a timely manner. So um, certainly reach out to them if, if you do have any questions. Uh, next, I am going to invite our friends from the Kessel Internship Office, uh, um, Patty Martin and Elizabeth Clark. Hi. Hello. Hi, I'm Patty Martin. And I'm Liz Clark. And we are here from the all new Kessel Internship Center. The Kessel Internship, Internship Center is open to all Kessel students interested in an internship. All of you. Uh, the internship is a, oh, embarrassing thing. Uh, an internship is a career related work experience in a profession related to your Kessel degree. So this is your introduction to the real world when you get an internship. It will help you take your degree wherever you want it to go. There are many benefits to doing an internship. You can learn what you love, network and build relationships in your field, and learn what comes next after graduation. Liz and I want to encourage you all to just contact us to get the process started. You can ask us anything. You can say you have no idea what you would want to do on an internship or that you know exactly what you want, but you just don't know where to start. We, you can just ask us a, a short email and we'll help you know what to do next. Even if you're not ready to do an internship this year, it's always a good idea to plan ahead because it's going to help you stay organized and not get stressed. Right, and um, email is the best first step for the internship center. We'll answer you right away. Um, but beyond that, we do have just a few words to say to you about what all students can do to prepare for an internship. Yes, yeah, so you can start working on your resume. Keep track of some of the things that you're working on in class that are related to your career goals. Visit our website, research some of the jobs available in your field, and you know, keep a log or take notes of something or things that you're interested in. We also recommend that you can be a counselor in career services. Um, you can think about joining a student organization that actually can help with your internship search later. And it's highly recommended that you take advantage of your professor's office hours you'll want to ask them for a reference once you start looking for an internship. Even though you can come to Patty and me, there are eight established internship programs in Castle right now. Those are criminal justice and criminology, psychology, humanities and history, Ottawa, public affairs, environmental studies, urban and regional studies, and economics. Each of those programs Liz just mentioned has a faculty coordinator who can also help you get ready for a great internship. Some accept all CASEL majors, and others are just for certain majors. An internship is what you make it, and it can change your life. We really look forward to helping you. Okay, bye. Bye. Thanks, Morgan. Thank you both so, so much. All right, moving on. Uh, we are going to hear from our director of the Language Lab, uh, Alfonso. Hello, oh, uh, how's it going? So uh, in the language lab, we focus on helping students that are currently enrolled on language courses and also students that are not enrolled but have an interest in learning a second language. So we have uh, resources that are subscription-based, they're free, they're either two and a half or Scola, Mango Languages, and also <clears throat> resources to help you, uh, such as a movie collection, uh, tutoring services, uh, board game collection, video game collection, most of these resources, many of them are only available in the physical space, uh, but we have made some available online. And we're also having events coming up. October 16, we have a happy hour, a language happy hour. You can get together, meet other students uh, in, in, that are also in language programs. Uh, Day of the Dead, October 30, we'll have another event coming up. And one of the services that we provide our students is tutoring services. Uh, and to access tutoring services, what you want to do is click on that uh, link that I share on the slide. I think the links are going to be posted later in the chat or um, we can get the slides to you, but they're also available in the website. So if you go to the tiny URL, KFLML, you'll be able to see it there. You share with us your schedule, we'll get back to you and pair you up with a tutor so that you can practice uh, languages. You also, as, as you notice, there is a French uh, conversation hour. Uh, coming up soon, um, but we'll have events throughout the semester. Uh, some of the physical aspects are not available to go back physically, 
but we'll keep uh, offering tutoring. There's some uh, potential SI sessions that we'll also have where you'll meet with tutors and have conversations with them. And we'll have uh, cultural events throughout the year as well. Um, and uh, October 16, we hope to see, if you have an interest in foreign languages, come on on too. Uh, students that are in, in the programs will be there, but we hope uh, other people that are interested also join. And we just, uh, we like to not only facilitate language learning, but also culture uh, learning from other cultures and also providing a safe space and a, and a welcoming space for all students. Great, thank you so, so much. Yeah, definitely take advantage of that. Um, I know one of the things that I really regret um, from when I was a student was not taking a foreign language. It definitely would have come in handy, um, especially as you start traveling the world, just knowing kind of those basics of the language. And it's something that I think you'll really fall in love with, love with and wish that you would have continued um, in school. So certainly if you have the opportunity and you have the bandwidth, definitely consider studying a foreign language. Uh, moving on, we are going to hear uh, about our math learning center. If none of you have visited yet, this is definitely a place I recommend um, stopping into. Inessa, do you mind telling us a little bit about the center? Well, sure. Hi, my name is Inessa Karasik and I'm director of math learning center. So our center uh, made, basically uh, made to help students to succeed in math. Uh, very often I hear from students Oh, math is not my subject. I am not very good on math. I am afraid of math, all kinds of complaints. And that's why we are there to help you. We open from uh, 10 o'clock to 8.30 uh, p.m. And this is big privilege to students because um, we used to be open until seven o'clock and all the students complain that evening hours are better for them. So when we are virtually, so you can uh, drop your with your question at eight o'clock, at 8.30, my tutors are helping you, always helping you. We are uh, helping with uh, all, mostly all uh, classes, math classes, from a uh, lower level to upper level. It depends on ability of tutors. Uh, you can find on our website, you can find out our uh, schedule and you can find out if tutor can help you at that particular time. Also, we have um, a common uh, Zoom uh, address. So uh, every tutor who works for MLC work with the, uh, using that common uh, Zoom um, address. Why? because now we have pair, uh, paired tutors. So two tutors at the same time. If one tutor cannot answer or you are not uh, satisfied with answer of tutor, which uh, I doubt it happened, but sometimes everybody has different learning styles and different pre preferences. So you can um, immediately ask other question or your tutor can ask other question. Also, we uh, try to, to do group tutoring. We try to combine students from the same course in group that tutor will help everybody. Uh, it doesn't matter that you are taking different professor, but math is the same. So basically everybody is at the same uh, um, uh, level and uh, I encourage you to use group because in group you can work uh, with your uh, classmates and sometimes when you uh, ask question loudly or explain loudly uh, you get idea what was wrong with your um, doing problem or whatever. Um, also I'd like to tell to add that uh, our tutors are recommended by faculty and I take to consideration uh, their uh, uh, high uh, knowledge of math and uh, their communication skills. So uh, I am sure if you come uh, for MLC, you will be helped and you will be satisfied. Uh, only one suggestion, which uh, you probably hear a lot, 
don't fall behind. We are there to help you. Anytime, small question, big question, there is no stupid questions. If you have questions, it means that you try to learn and we are there to help you. Hope to see you at MLC. Great, thank you so, so much, Anessa. Uh, moving on here, we are gonna hear from Liz, who is the director of the Science Learning Center. Thanks, Morgan. My name is Liz McDowell, and I'm the director of the Science Learning Center. I also coordinate our SI study groups in the sciences, and I wanted to briefly mention SI as well. So these are student-run study groups uh, led by students who were successful in the course previously, and they help students study efficiently and successfully for courses. Uh, these study groups focus not only on course material, but also on learning strategies that can be applied to all of your courses uh, beyond the course that's supported with SI. So those are great opportunities. Check course canvas sites um, to find information about SI leaders and SI sessions. In the Science Learning Center itself, we have a whole set of student assistants who will help students uh, work through self-paced learning modules. And these are modules on topics that are really important for success in the science courses. Our student assistants uh, will help students uh, master those topics, answer any questions they have. Um, and those modules, they're assigned in most of the introductory science courses. You can check our website or your course Canvas site for more information about those modules. Our student assistants are also really happy to meet and chat with students uh, and just have a more general conversation about strategies to approach science courses successfully. So they can also help with general learning strategies, strategies for specific courses, and they can help students connect up with other resources on campus. So it could be tutoring, could be any of our other student success programs. Um, so if you or if anyone you know is interested in meeting with somebody to chat about strategies to be even more successful in your science courses, definitely reach out to us. Our website is there on the screen. You can email the Science Learning Center at slcscheduling at gmail.com and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Um, and please, if you have any questions, I'm happy to chat later on in this presentation. Great, thank you so, so much, Liz. And then, of course, last but not least, uh, we will hear from the Writing Center and the director, John Taylor. Hi, everyone. My name is John Taylor, um, and I'm the coordinator of the Writing Center here at U of M Dearborn. Um, a little bit about the Writing Center. Uh, why would you come to the Writing Center if you're a student? Um, we can help uh, students understand prompts and assignments, brainstorm and narrow topics, uh, develop a proposition, thesis, or intention, outlining, drafting, citation, engaging with your sources, just generally becoming a better equipped writer and a more confident writer uh, by making peer collaboration a part of your writing process. Um, so at the Writing Center, we're staffed by uh, trained um, peer consultants, and you'll have one-on-one -on -one sessions uh, with these consultants to discuss your work. Um, the writing assistance that we provide is tailored specifically to your needs. So the unique part of the Writing Center is that you get to work one-on-one -on -one, um, with the consultant versus uh, the, the classroom environment where you might, may not have that, that tailored um, attention. Uh, and, and lastly, sort of a relaxed and candid discussion of writing. Um, because you're working with the peer, you're working with someone who is uh, sort of alongside you in this um, college journey and experience. Um, what do we see in the Writing Center as far as genres go? Um, uh, when I say any kind of type of writing, I really do mean any type of writing. Um, whether you're working in sort of academic realms of research essays, reflection writing, uh, lit reviews, annotated bibliographies, lab reports, abstracts, articles, um, or creative writing, poetry and fiction, professional writing of emails, resumes, cover letters, all kinds of essays, um, and even graphic work, uh, graphic comics, essays, infographics and posters. Whatever it is that you're working on, if you're a student at University of Michigan Dearborn, you're welcome to bring that writing to the Writing Center. Um, to use the Writing Center, my strong encouragement is to review your syllabi, to identify your due dates, and to make your appointments early, um, and to make your appointments regularly. Uh, as Anessa uh, talked about, you know, making the appointments late in the game, midterms and finals is good. Um, but making your appointments throughout the semester is, is great and you'll be much better, better equipped for your deadlines. Um, I would also encourage you to visit our website to read about our different consultants um, and their areas of study. 
Um, all of our consultants are equipped to help you along in your writing. Uh, but some of our consultants regularly write lab reports um, on their own time, whereas uh, some of our other consultants regularly write poetry um, and, and essays in, in English and literature. Um, and so while all of our consultants are equipped to help you, uh, it's worth looking at the, the folks that we have on staff to see if there is someone um, who can teach you writing, but who is also in your major. Um, to access our schedule, you can just go to our website um, or directly to umich dot mywconline.com that will take you right to our schedule um, but there's a big button on our website that says make an appointment and it'll take you right there um, when you're preparing for a writing center appointment another strong encouragement is to have um, your writing assignment or prompt with you uh, one of the things a writing consultant will first ask for is uh, what is your instructor asking you to do what is the prompt and how can we achieve that together um, to have that information alongside you will be uh, most helpful. Um, the Writing Center, uh, as I've said, is, is for all writers. Um, and if you're a student at Uni University of Michigan Dearborn, whatever you're working on, uh, it's welcome at the Writing Center from brainstorming, even if you don't have a word written yet, all the way to revising and, and working on that final punctuation. Regardless of your home language, um, we'll work with you to identify and write for your target audience in English and between English and other languages. Um, writing is very much so a process. Um, so visit the Writing Center early and visit often. The types of appointments we're offering right now um, are two types of virtual appointments uh, called online appointments and e-tutoring. Online appointments are synchronous online sessions where you can video call or live chat with a consultant while looking at your writing. And e-tutoring is an asynchronous option where you can send your writing, uh, the writing assignment itself, and detailed questions about your writing you'd like your consultant to address, and you'll receive a response within 24 hours. Um, all sessions can be scheduled uh, by following the Make Appointment button on our website um, or going directly to mywritingcenteronline.com. Um, uh, and lastly, for faculty, um, if you're looking to strengthen the writing uh, your students are doing in your courses, consider partnering with the Writing Center. Uh, we can build uh, the Writing Center into an assignment sequence so your entire class can strengthen their writing and become familiar with the campus resource. Uh, and whether faculty or students, if you have any questions, troubles, uh, or confusions, please feel free to reach out to me at any, any time. Back to you, Morgan. Perfect, thank you so much, John. Yeah, really good information there. Um, it is important to point out that uh, faculty certainly can utilize the Writing Center as well. Um, you know, as you're joining us on this call, if you do have questions for John, please feel free to reach out. So I do just wanna say thank you uh, to everybody who has presented today. I think we've heard a lot of really great information and I'd like to stop sharing my screen right now and ask everyone if they can um, turn their mics on and their cameras because we are gonna do a little bit of Q and A um, with our uh, participants here. So I do have a few questions. I'm gonna to try to field them and identify who might be best to answer that. Uh, so getting started. Um, this is probably a good question for the internship office. What is it like to be an intern at Castle? Well, it's, it's really exciting. I know because I was an intern in Castle many years ago and it's really helped me um, come a long way both professionally and academically and it's just one of many resources on campus that you should definitely utilize. And, um, you know, it's exciting because you get to pair all these great classes that you're taking, especially the foundations now. The stuff you learn in these classes is really going to help you um, with your internship because it's exciting to put it from, like, you know, in a class, looking at it maybe on paper into the real world and, like, doing that thing yourself. So it's really exciting. May I add uh, that most students who do internships, they're juggling it along with their other classes. So what it might feel like is that you have your classwork and you still get all the same uh, progress toward graduation, but that in one semester or maybe more, depending on what you want, you have one of your classes is going to an internship and or even doing a remote internship. We do have both, remote and in-person internships. I hope that helps. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, this is probably for any of you, um, but as a freshman,
how can I make the most of my experience um, involvement wise, but also academically? Anybody want to tackle that one? <laughs> I <Any> <laughs> All right. Um, so I think an, an people have uh, suggested a number of things over the course of uh, our time together here that I would reiterate. Uh, one would be taking advantage of uh, internship uh, opportunities. This is, I think, uh, especially important for uh, for Castle students, especially in some areas like oh, my own history or English. Uh, having the ability to have that practical experience and put the theory into practice, as Liz just pointed out, is really important. Um, I would also strongly encourage people to get to know their faculty. Um, I know it might seem as though you're bothering them, uh, but frankly, uh, we're rather lonely um, as faculty members and we enjoy immensely um, having interactions and talking to our students. Uh, that is uh, really important because um, A, it, I think it helps you to do better in the class. B, it also helps your faculty member to get to know you. So when it comes time to writing letters of recommendation, they can really talk about you and, and your strengths. Um, I know we're remote, but uh, taking advantage of the various um, events on campus, um, and uh, participating in uh, student organizations is a, another fabulous way to um, plug in and to make the most of your uh, time here in the College of Arts, Sciences, and Letters. And I'll shut up and see if anyone else wants to add anything else. Um, I'll add one thing if I could, Morgan. Um, one of, I, I guess my strong encouragements uh, um, to, to current students um, is of course to, to visit these learning centers and, and to work with your peers um, in your areas of study uh, uh, on, on your work in these sort of dedicated spaces. Um, it's, it's a great way, I think especially now as we're looking for um, community uh, and, and are finding that we, we, we don't have it in the same way we're used to. Uh, to, to take advantage of these resources um, as, as a social exercise, as a way to sort of further your education alongside your peers. Um, and also recognize that your peers are working in these learning labs. And if you are interested in doing that type of work to reach out to these um, uh, center coordinators and directors to see if you might be a good fit for that type of work. Um, I, as you can imagine, worked in writing centers during my undergraduate and graduate um, years, and it, that was some of my uh, uh, best experiences uh, as an undergraduate student was being able to um, participate in a professional way on campus. And so another encouragement, in addition to your academic pursuits, there are pursuits on campus professionally that um, are certainly worthwhile. Yeah, really great points by everyone. I think um, right now we're all struggling with how do we get involved. Um, you know, definitely taking advantage of the different events and trying to engage with um, your peers that are out there. There's lots of different um, avenues to do so. Student life is doing so many different things um, that are trying to get students together. Um, so definitely if you're looking for specifics, feel free to reach out to myself or anybody in this call. Um, all of us are happy to, you know, hook you up with some different things and ways to get involved. I have another question here, and Dean Hershock, this one is probably geared toward you, but will there be student research lab opportunities with a faculty member or as a capstone? Um, yes, uh, the um, University of Michigan uh, Office of Research is allowing undergraduate students uh, uh, on a limited basis back into uh, the labs starting October the 12th um, in terms of, of research. Um, again, uh, we won't be able to accommodate the numbers of students that we are accustomed to having working in those labs, but those opportunities are starting up again. Um, the college also has uh, some resources available that it uses to help facilitate that work, um, uh, both supporting the student and, and the faculty member. Uh, there is also uh, there are also independent study opportunities available uh, across the college where students could work in this case uh, remotely 
with an individual faculty member on, on a research project. Uh, it could be something that um, <clears throat> they've um, uh, always wanted to work on on their own, uh, which is often the case in the humanities and uh, the liberal arts. Um, or there may be opportunities, again, depending on the nature of the work in some of the sciences um, to be uh, doing a piece of a research project with a faculty member uh, remotely as well. But those opportunities are, are still there. They're ramping up. And then we have opportunities to present with the Castle Re uh, Undergraduate Research Showcase. Uh, it's digital now, but nonetheless, students can uh, share their, their uh, uh, research widely. And then hopefully Meeting of Minds maybe um, um, also moves digitally this year, it was canceled last year, but those are great opportunities to, uh, for students to show the work that they're engaged in. Definitely. We have time for just one more question. Um, and John, I think this is probably geared toward you, but could you let us all know when the writing awards will be announced? Uh, sure. Um, the, the writing awards are coordinated by P.F. Poppin in the composition discipline. Um, and so I, uh, it's not precisely my discipline, um, or it is my discipline, but I don't head up the writing awards. However, um, if you just Google uh, writing awards, U of M Dearborn, it, it, the first result um, is the page. And the 2020 winners have already been announced. Um, historically, uh, uh, submissions for the next, so the 2021 um, writing awards period, uh, that deadline will probably be in May as it has been in the past. Um, if you have specific questions or confusions about the writing awards, please feel free to email me directly um, or PF Potvin um, directly if you, if you find his email, but I will connect you um, in any way I can to get you the information that you need. Great, thank you so much. I do wanna be respectful of everyone's time. Um, it is 5.01. So we went over just a hair, but I want to thank everyone for being with us. Um, hopefully you got a lot of good information here. I know I learned some things even being part of this. Um, as mentioned, this is recorded and it will be posted to our website. Um, all of the questions will also be answered uh, via the website and then the ones we weren't able to get to, we will answer those as well. Um, and we did have a question come in about where to find the links to those upcoming events. All of those actually can be found on the events page of the UM Dearborn website. So if you're looking for any of that information, just visit the events page um, and they're all listed there on those dates. So again, thank you very, very much. And hopefully we will see you at our next Castle Conversation on October 15th. Thank you.